Erev Tov covering. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Breaking news. Uh, Lorenzo on Already Happened posting up uh, several pictures, Arabic pictures. This is the U.S. military vehicles that were going over on the, uh, I believe, what was that? The Patriot was the name of that ship there, the U.S. Patriot ship that uh, went to the Gulf of Aqaba. Well, as you can see, all that military equipment ends up on the Syrian-Jordanian border. It looks like the United States is really getting ready and gearing up for, uh, for a war in Syria, but not just Syria either. Things could really ratchet up here, friends, and I'm afraid it's going to ratchet up in a way that is not going to be good. But right there in the deserts there, uh, of the Jordanian desert, major military base. We're talking hundreds of military equipment there have been brought up, U.S. military equipment there, ready for action with the Syrian government, uh, and it's not, not, as I say, not looking good. But it just doesn't stop there. It's, it's just really nuts everywhere. Today, uh, actually, I'll take that back. This happened on the 6th of May, two days ago. Uh, Fontanka.ru put out an article that three of the ships that were supposed to be participating in tomorrow's parade, Russians parade, uh, left port today, right from uh, none other than President Putin's own hometown, uh, to intercept the USS Kearney. Uh, the USS Kearney, which entered just the other day into the Danish Straits at dawn on May the 5th, uh, conducting patrols in support of U.S. national security interests in Europe, according to this particular tweet here by the Naval Forces of Europe, is in this region now. And of course, according to Russian sources, are within striking distance, in striking distance of uh, Russia's own province there in, uh, of course, Kaliningrad, as I have stated over and over and over, is the Cuban Missile Crisis for NATO. It's the Cuban Missile Crisis for Europe. And it's not just that. There's so much that's going on. Now, there was, after I had pulled up the Fontanka.ru uh, article, I actually ran across also the guide to petersburg.com that addresses the news agency of Fontanka.ru, their article as well. Uh, so instead of me doing the translation on the Russian one, I figured we'd just use this one here. A sensation typical for the Cold War times, but hardly imaginable, told today happened in St. Petersburg, Russia. Excuse me, St. Petersburg. Russian battleships that had come to take part in the Victory Days parade uh, on May 9th have urgently been called into the Baltic Sea to prevent or uh, counterfeit a potential air missile strike by U.S. Navy's USS Kearney. According to the news agency Fontanka.ru reported what might seem to be a fool's day joke is what locals can check out by seeing the waters of Neva River which hosted the warships just a couple of days ago and are now empty. But here's what's really strange. You want to talk about something odd. Now, this is two different Russian language articles about this event. And this article here from RIA.ru claiming that it's a fake news story. They said they will be participating in the May 9th event. Well, maybe they will be participating, but it doesn't say that they did not leave and go to intercept the USS Kearney. And I, and I also found a yet another article, a Ukrainian article, stating that the uh, Russian warships had breached the uh, Latvia waters there within four miles of their territorial waters. So it does look like that they indeed did leave and are there watching close the USS Kearney because it puts it within striking distance of major targets for Russia. Now, is this all a bunch of hype? Or maybe not. Remember we reported to you the other day that the U.S. may be, according to some, like Dr. Uh, Craig Roberts, who believes that the United States is planning a preemptive strike on Russia. And some of his, uh, his thinking, along with one of the Russian generals, uh, claims that the fact that the United States has moved in its own 
uh, air defense missile systems in Europe and even that in uh, North Korea, as we can see the THAAD system. And by the way, Sputnik reporting today, United States Forces, Korea Colonel Rob Manning said that the THAAD system is now fully operational and ready to take on any uh, attack that North Korea might send towards Seoul, South Korea. Interesting, isn't it? That THAAD, THAAD high altitude system is also meant to be able to knock out Russian nuclear ICBMs that could be headed back towards mainland USA or even Japan. In fact, the Russian and Chinese say that THAAD is too, too big of a gun to be having there inside of uh, South Korea when they say North Korea's missiles, they could never get high enough for the system to even operate properly with. I think it has a lot to do with the S-300 and S-400 system that Russia has over inside of Syria. And when the United States was using the Tomahawk cruise missiles, it seemed that, what, 26 of those missiles reached their target and some 30 plus missiles never made it? Could it have been that the S-300, S-400 system did engage, which never made media anywhere that I am aware of, but yet failed to do the job that Russia really hoped to, that they would do. So now Russia has the Bulk M3 missile defense system down on North Korea's northern border there with Russia. And the Chinese have the advanced S-300 system that Russia designed as well on North Korea's northern border. And they are both there aimed at the U.S. if they were to fire any missiles towards North Korea. Very interesting how things are going. And then Prime, excuse me, Foreign Minister Lavrov makes a statement here. This is reported on stalkerzone.org that NATO's plan to absorb Ukraine failed. They quote him, NATO officials are offended because their project of full absorption of Ukraine into a zone of influence and inclusion of the Ukraine and North Atlantic Alliance and the inclusion of Crimea in the plans of the military encirclement of Russian Federation failed. It didn't fail. Foreign Minister Lavrov, I have to disagree with you. It did not fail. They weren't trying to include Ukraine into NATO's alliance, nor were they trying to bring Ukraine into the European Union. They were wanting to topple Ukraine for one reason, and that was to demonize Russia, put their air defense systems there. Because why? The U.S. generals are truly concerned of losing hegemony over the entire world. And Russia's deployment in 2018 of their intercontinental ballistic missile that is a hypersonic system. And according to experts, 10 years above or in advance of that of Western technology, Russia claiming nothing can stop it. Not the THAAD, not the, not the Patriot missile system. Nothing, they say, will stop this ICBM from reaching its target. Maybe, maybe America does have good reason to go to the extent and to the lengths they have to try to counter what they feel to be a Russian aggression. But the odd thing is, is Russia's never been aggressive. Russia didn't cause the collapse of Ukraine. Russia didn't cause the Maidan coup. Russia hasn't spent the last 50 years going all over the world toppling other nations. Kind of interesting, isn't it? You know, we probably could have peace on this earth. But somehow or another, the elite just don't want it. I guess it's just too good for paying the bills. At the lives, the sacrifice of the lives of the innocent. And so now, as we sit back and watch, the United States has all of that military piled up over there on Syria's border, right there on the inside of Jordan. Some of you guys just thought we was blowing smoke up people's skirt, thinking this was just a joke. It's not a joke. They are going to take down Damascus. And if you've not watched the video that I did on Damascus, and how did the prophet Isaiah even indicts Israel, though ignorant, as it says, they were not mindful of their rock. They did not know their Messiah. Had Israel known their Messiah, they would have never been involved in the collapse of the Syrian government. And God even says through Isaiah the prophet that Damascus was a fortress for Ephraim. Ephraim, those of the house of Israel, 
that had believed Yeshua to be their Messiah, the earliest and oldest known Christians living in Damascus, will lose their fortress, all because Israel allowed all these nations to enter in and go against Syria. I think if Israel had taken their stand to support President Bashar al-Assad, we would have never had this type of a situation going on in Syria. And I think that's what Isaiah is trying to show as well. And yet at the same time, Sally Yates here, according to a Russian news source here on Letna.ru, testifying today, kind of interesting, I ask her the question here, even in the title here, whether or not Trump was working with Putin. She said that would require for us to deal with uh, uh, secret information that's not been declassified. But as she stated, that does not mean that my answer is a yes. I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, all this big hoopla over whether or not Russia was affecting the U.S. elections. Well, sure, RT, Sputnik, they realized to try to throw more weight behind President Trump because, after all, he seemed to be the better candidate to, to try to avert a war with Russia and even lift sanctions. Clinton definitely didn't seem to indicate any of these things, but have no fear the U.S. military industrial complex has swayed President Trump to the other side. Or maybe he doesn't even know what side that is. Maybe they're just doing what they want to do anyway. And after all, this article here that came out in December over on the, I believe, what is this, the, the uh, LA Times, spoke about just how involved the United States has been in causing problems in other countries' elections. One in every nine countries since the end of se the Second World War. Well, they name them off, one after another. Nicaragua, uh, you know, Czechoslovakia, uh, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Even Israel, they don't even mention this one in this article, it only goes to the year 2000 in this article here, but even in Israel. They say that Obama sent the whole team of delegation down there to overturn uh, President, or excuse me, Prime Minister Putin from being reelected. But you know, you never know. Maybe they went down there to make sure he did get reelected. Nonetheless, the U.S. was very openly involved in the influence of the Israeli elections under President Barack Hussein Obama. And then they have the nerve to even say anything against Russia. You know, I can understand if Russia had hacked the U.S. voting machines and caused something like that to happen. No, I could understand the major concern at that point there. But if Russia just throws some of their own political uh, or their, what would you call it, their, their, um, their own news commentations to, to sway the American public towards another uh, candidate, what's wrong with that? Is that any different than President Barack Obama standing behind Macron to become the president of France before the uh, elections are over? Or is it any difference when the chief rabbi of, of uh, Paris joins this multi-religious uh, uh, movement to support also Macron and Le Pen gets thrown under the bus. Not to say that I support everything that Le Pen stood for either, but the point being, they all went, went to the side of Macron and they were all trying to influence the French elections and to intentionally make sure Le Pen did not get in. Why? Because Le Pen did not stand for mainstream ideology. It was not a, you know, maybe they should have really called that the Pope's choice and then tag it for Macron. I think that's the way it should have been done. Nonetheless, what are we dealing with right now? Looks like we are headed to some type of war in the very near future. Whether it be Syria, North Korea, Russia, who knows what? Europe? I have no idea. Maybe not quite yet. I know there's some people really concerned that May will be the month when everything will break loose. Maybe just a little bit premature. But there's one thing for sure, it's not far off. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Talk.